This was Sony's smallest and lightest interchangeable lens camera when it was released in 2014. Though the size doesn't really make a difference when I take it out with full frame telephotos. Slap on a smaller lens and it's actually quite compact. While not as old as some of the other cameras I've looked at, the A5000 is still getting up there in age. I've been using the camera for the past year, and it's going to be my main camera for bird and wildlife, macro, and landscapes going into 2022. I use the camera for still photos more than videos, though that is changing as I work on YouTube more. I've been quite happy with the image quality of the camera after coming from shooting only on smartphones and enjoy the depth of field and control I can get. 20 megapixels isn't a huge number, but is enough for most users. Just have to keep in mind there isn't as much room for cropping in post. The more you crop, the more detail you'll lose and noise you'll see. ISO is fully usable from 100 to 800, with a bit more noise showing around 1000 to 1250, and I generally don't shoot higher than 1600 unless I really need to for higher shutter speeds. Shadows and dark colors are going to show noise a lot more. There isn't any stabilization in the body at all, which is compounded with the fact of the small body's ergonomics when using it with larger lenses. There is steady shot built into the kit lens, which works well enough. Here's a little comparison of a budget manual focus lens with no stabilization at all versus the kit lens at the same focal length. Both are set to the same aperture and handheld in the same fashion. I plan on doing a video comparing the kit lens to both cheap vintage and modern budget lenses. So subscribe and hit that little bell if you want to be notified when that comes out. Back to the ergonomics of the camera. The grip is quite small and shallow, even if you don't have large hands. Mine is also showing quite a bit of wear from my fingertips on the body. The compact size and weight is really nice for slapping on smaller lenses and bringing it around with you, and is easy to use with smaller tripods, which is great for video. However, with the small size comes a few little complaints. There is no mode dial, meaning using a button, then dial, to switch modes. There are also no custom function buttons. Some buttons can be changed in the menu, but that's still limited. Related to the last two points, you can't save custom settings, and when changing from photo to video, or back, you have to change the settings back every time. And if you haven't noticed yet, there also isn't any viewfinder. Or a hot shoe. When using the camera more for landscapes, photo walks, and the occasional portraits I can sneak in, I never had issues with burst rates or buffer sizes. But they are quite low on this camera. At least for RAW, JPEG can get in quite a few shots before buffering. I don't shoot any quick actions like sports, but at just over 3 frames per second, missing shots on faster moving subjects like birds is probably going to happen. Again, JPEGs don't suffer as much from this problem. If you are shooting raw, remember to shoot in small bursts, instead of smashing that like button, I mean that shutter button, and you should be good. I can't really comment on autofocus as I don't really use the kit lens that often, but what I can say is the body works well with vintage manual lenses and cheapy adapters. Focus peaking makes manual focusing a bit easier, even if the LCD's low resolution of just 460k dots makes everything look soft when zoomed in anyway. And I find this especially true for video, making it look out of focus or blurred even if it's not that bad. Sunlight legibility also isn't a strong point. There is a sunlight mode, but I found this just made everything on the screen look overexposed, not brighter. At least it's tilty, when I remember. 
Well, on the top, just behind the shutter button, you can find the movie button. This can be set to work in video mode only, or to record video whenever you press it with the currently set settings. Video can be recorded in 1080p, 24 frames per second, or 1080p, 60 frames interlaced. It's not the sharpest 1080p out there, that's for sure, but I really don't find it that bad. A bonus of lower bitrate video is the smaller file sizes, meaning my older computer won't scream at me when rendering. I feel like the Sony A5000 makes a great starter camera for people looking to upgrade from smartphones or point and shoots, as long as you can get it for a decent price. Image and video quality are pretty good straight out of camera, and should be for most average users or beginners. In my opinion, it also works well for someone on a budget looking for a cheap camera to start their own YouTube channel. It's a compact and nice looking camera, and even eight years later, doesn't really look outdated. While it can be quite simple to use if you just want to point at something in auto and press the shutter or record, as I grow and improve, I'm beginning to feel some things are missing. It might not be a great body for bird photography, due to the poor handling and low frames per second, but it's a great camera for learning on, walking around with, and catching those moments with my family. Hopefully, I'll have the chance to upgrade in the near future. But it's not about having the best gear. It's about how you use it and knowing how to use your gear to its full potential. Even if I upgrade, I'll probably keep this camera as a backup for the foreseeable future. And I'd still recommend this camera, as long as you don't overpay.